Hey, JP here. Today, we're firing Magneto Hydrodynamic Test number 117. Let's go from the In these tests, we interact magnetically with the plasma in the exhaust of a rocket engine. We're doing this to get data for our own plasma rocket engines that we're developing for our airships. This is a simplified diagram of what's going on. Today's test is not to discover something new, it's to rule something out. This firing is at the same power level and the same magnetic field strength as on an earlier test. This is an earlier test firing with a similar configuration. A lot of the testing we do has to do with the physical structure of the MHD generator, the angle of the electrodes matching the expansion of the MHD channel to that of the plasma, you know, things like that. When we finally got everything optimized, we discovered that the peak point of the magnetic field was aligned with the optimum expansion on the channel. That's great, but it seemed too much of a coincidence. I'm never that lucky. We needed to know whether that was really the case or was one aspect or another overwhelming the data. We are going to turn the magnets 90 degrees. We'll do this in the plane of the magnetic field so that the direction of the magnetic force doesn't change. Do you remember back in science class, the magnet thumb rule? The thumb is the magnetic force, your pointer finger indicates the moving charge, and your index points in the direction of the magnetic field line. So this is really the only change we're making. This should also tell us about the impact of the magnetic field up and downstream of the electrodes. If this works, we could move the magnets closer to the rocket nozzle. At best, this will increase performance, and at the least, we'll be able to make a more compact reactor. I have found that you can't do a test like this only once. There are just too many things going on, and it's easy to let an unnoticed change enter in the test and affect your results. I've been fooled by this too often. We'll do this test at least twice. In this test, our metric is voltage across the electrodes. We gather data at a thousand samples per second. With the equipment we have, we can sample at 10,000 samples per second. The high sample rate doesn't really tell us anything and introduces a lot of noise into the data. But just to be sure, every now and then we take a peek all the way down that time scale, just to make sure we're not missing anything. After the firing, I'll tell you what's coming up next in the MHD firing program. We're running the magnets at a field strength at 0.6 Teslas and the engine at a total of 200 Newton seconds. Okay, let's fire this puppy. We tend to fire in the dark so we can see the magnets effect on the shape of the plume. The firing went well, and we got the data. The voltage is lower by half than the same test with the magnets turned 90 degrees. This makes it look like we've had the magnets characterized correctly all along. But just to be sure, we ran one more test. For this one, we moved the magnets over the first electrode position. This is the one closest to the rocket nozzle. These electrodes are also a little closer together. We were hoping for one of two possibilities. One 
improved performance over the last test, but lower performance than with our standard configuration, or two, something different altogether. That would mean that we had a flaw in the last test, and we'd need to start all over. In this setup, the data logger is directly hooked up to the electrodes, and the data logger itself is directly connected to a PC running DataQ logging software. got a solid set of data. We doubled the voltage output, but it still wasn't as good as running it in our standard geometry. This is just what we were looking for. Sometimes you look for breakthroughs, and other times you're just looking to rule things out, making sure you didn't miss anything. These last two tests were definitely the latter. These straight MHD tests are just one part of our engine program. There are MHD blocks that let us play with the chemistry. This is our RF induction unit that lets us tune the plasma. We also do high altitude testing. You can never start too early in testing in the operating environment. Coming up next in the program, using 3D printed graphene electrodes. During the firing, the electrodes tend to get fouled. To see if we can cure that, we're going to try ablative electrodes. The idea is that the exhaust melts the plastic embedded graphene, then blows it away, exposing fresh graphene. We just continuously feed it in while the engine is running. So at least that's the concept. I'll let you know how it goes. Be sure to click the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss that test and all the latest. Thank you for watching.